find out more about us or come come and organize with us at samealliance.com. Find out more information. That's the plug for now. What we're going to do now is I'm going to call out, um, what is it, count down the many, the how many years people have been together. And when we do that, you got to cheer, not just raise your hand, but I want you to all cheer, do a dance, a jig, something like that. So you ready? Yeah. All right. How many of you have been here, been together for zero to five years? more you can just keep cheering. You know? <laughs> All right. What about five to fifteen years? Okay. Okay. Fifteen to thirty years. Forty to thirty-five years. All right, guys. You feel comfortable at the end of this to uh, make an announcement to tune in on July 4th? Our MC Kelly Will be a quality radio? We haven't really planned on it, but... Okay, uh, we got the banner and the Jorge and it's going to be up there.
just thank you for being here tonight. And I want to say that I am a, I'm an organizer with Same Alliance because we are grassroots, horizontally red, red coalition that holds accountable every person who gets in the way of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex, pansexual, and polyamorous liberation. We show up as strong fighting allies for immigrant rights. Universalist Church of San Diego, where I teach Sunday school, and asked him if we could file a brief on the church's behalf supporting the right of same sex couples to marry. We ended up making an 
a broad interfaith brief, and we filed in one case after another, all the way up to the California, all the way up to the United States Supreme Court. I represent the California Council of Churches, which supports the right of same-sex couples to marry as a matter of equal rights under law and religious liberty. Conferences of the United Church of Christ, which supports the right of same-sex couples to marry in its churches. The Pacific Association of Reform Rabbis, because Reform Judaism, the largest movement in American Judaism, supports equality for all and the civil right to marry. I'm proud to represent the Metropolitan Community Churches. Now, what what do the Supreme Court's decisions today mean? We've got two of them. We've got two 5-4 decisions. One strikes down the Defense of Marriage Act, DOMA, saying, <laughs> saying it's a gross deprivation of equality and equal rights under law. And the other one says we're not going to decide whether same-sex couples have a right to marry in California because the proponents of Proposition 8 don't have standing to get the appeal here. They are not hurt if other people can marry. Why should they get to litigate other people's rights that don't hurt them? Now, the opinions, the opinions are, in a sense, narrow. The DOMA decision focuses only on DOMA Section 3. DOMA Section 3 says if a couple is legally married under the laws of their state and they're a same-sex couple, the federal government won't recognize it. The decision did not address DOMA Section 2. DOMA Section 2 says that state governments don't have to recognize same-sex couples' marriages that were entered in another state. Now, do you think that the analysis that applies to DOMA Section 3 might apply to DOMA Section 2? Yeah. What was DOMA? DOMA was, and I quote the Supreme Court, a bare, motivated by a bare congressional desire to harm a politically unpopular group. Right. You can't do that. What motivated Proposition 8? Hey. 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 The same thing. That's right. So although they didn't address whether Proposition 8 was constitutional, I think that the rationale of the DOMA opinion applies fully. The DOMA opinion says that the principal purpose of DOMA is to impose inequality. Well, isn't that true of all those state laws that were passed to put provisions and constitutions to outlaw same-sex marriages in those states? Darn right it is. Justice Kennedy's DOMA opinion says that the statute was motivated. In fact, Congress put it in the House report. It was to express moral disapproval of American citizens, of American citizens who love people of their own gender. Well, what, what does the Supreme Court say? It says the Fifth Amendment withdraws from government the power to degrade or demean in the way this law does. I think that applies fully to DOMA Section 2. Yeah. Justice Kennedy writes, the differentiation between same-sex couples and mixed-sex couples that DOMA imposes, the differentiation, differentiation demeans the couple whose moral and sexual choices the Constitution protects and it humiliates tens of thousands of children right. now being raised by same-sex couples. The law in question makes it even more difficult for the children to understand the integrity and closeness of their own family and its concord with other families in their community and in their daily lives. DOMA also brings financial harm to children of same-sex couples. Well, doesn't that apply even more strongly to states that deny same-sex couples the right to enter legal marriages in the first place? These decisions leave open the question of the right to marry itself. They leave open whether states can deny 
legal recognition to same-sex couples' marriages entered in other states. They don't address the question currently pending before the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals of the constitutionality of the laws in Hawaii and in Nevada depriving same-sex couples of the right to marry. But I think, I think the DOMA decision points the way to the right decision in those cases. And you know what made the difference? What? You did! It's a dramatic, dramatic shift in public opinion recognizing that all Americans are equal and that loving relationships are equal that has made it possible for the courts to enter this kind of decisions. And although they haven't gone all the way here to recognize full equality in all states, we are headed in that direction. And you, you need to make that happen too by talking about the injustice that people can't get married in Alabama, that they can't get married in Arkansas, or that if you get married in this state and you move to one of those states, your marriage is not recognized in equal rights. We're going to get there, and it's going to be because of you. Thank you. Let's give it up for Eric one more time. All right, next up we have the very, very fabulous Alfie Padilla. And she is with, she's an organizer with Campus of, of Our Cause and the most wonderful transgender activist. Let's give it a round, a round of applause for Alfie! Howdy! Oh, oh, Jesus Lord, there's a lot of you. Oh my God, I've never seen so many good looking queers in one place. I know where the place to be is! Sorry, yay! Yeah, let's just do one big yay. Yay! Yes. Oh my God. I firstly just want to say, honestly and truly from the bottom of my heart, thank you. To everybody who, when Prop 8 was first handed down, didn't just go in and sit and stare at the ground and say, I'm done. <laughs> you got out there and you yeah. said, this is bull. Yeah. And I love that about you guys. <laughs> now, uh, I'm from Texas. When Prop 8 handed down, was handed down in 2008, um, I heard about it in Texas, and the reason I heard about it is because so many people here were making a ruckus about it. So many people here weren't saying, oh, we should just sit down and be quiet about this, or oh, maybe somebody somewhere in the courts or some politician, hopefully, somewhere will handle it. People got up and they said, no, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do something about it. And if they weren't able to leave their house, they got on their computers and they made a freaking ruckus. And if all they could do was talk to people that they knew, they talked to the people that they knew. They said why Prop 8 was unconstitutional. And even removing the word unconstitutional, it's just wrong. Yeah. We can talk, yeah, we can talk about, you know, interpreting the Constitution all we want, but taking people's rights away is just plain wrong. And it should have ended there. Yeah. You people knew that, you got out there and you did something about it. And when I got here, um, in 2011 from Houston, Texas, I had never seen such dissent, and it was awesome. Uh, I can tell you that when people talk about how things are happening around the country, it's not an exaggeration. There is a lot of hope. There's a lot of hope happening right now, a lot of healing, but there's still a lot to be done. And I know you guys have probably been hearing that all day, but it's absolutely freaking true. Uh, what I want to tell you guys is that when people say to you, you know, there's still a lot to be done, because it's true, transgender people still don't have a lot of rights. Um, queer people and gender, any letter on the LGBT spectrum, you know, gay or transgender, lesbian, these people can still be fired from work in states just for being gay, just for being transgender, just for being bisexual, just for being intersex, just for being lesbian. They can be fired legally in this country, that's right. 
Now, obviously, we're going to go and we're going to do something about that. And I want, what, what I want to tell you guys is take the energy from today, all this happy energy, raise a freaking fuss and celebrate. And then when you go out, put that energy in the struggle because we are winning. That's right. Every day. It's happening all over the world and we need to do that bumper sticker that we see all the time. We really need to enact that. We need to think globally, act locally. That's right. Keep what's going on in Turkey. Keep what's going on in Brazil. If you don't know what's happening in Turkey and Brazil, I can tell you that it is going down. The people are fighting back, fighting for their rights. Fighting for their rights. I mean, we're right near, next to the border. Let's keep those undocumented people, those undocumented queers in our yeah. thoughts every day. That's right. And that's pretty much all I've got to say. I just want to end on one more time saying thank all of you so much. You know, people like to try to define activism. A real activist does this, and a real activist does that. What I'm here to tell you is that if you see something wrong, just speak out about it. No matter what form that takes, whether it's art, whether it's getting out with a sign and yelling, whether it's just arguing with your friends until they see your point, you do that until we get the job done, and you have a good freaking time while you do it. struggled together throughout history to gain visibility, acceptance, and equality. I remember, like many of you, when Massachusetts became the first state to legalize same-sex marriage. Yeah. I was only a sophomore in high school, and it's the first memory that I have of positive news about the LGBT community. That newspaper gave me so much hope that I stashed it away in my closet. And in the years and months after that, as we watched state after state ban equality, I would pull it out and I would look at it. And it would remind me that this decision would change my life. While we celebrate this moment, we must remember that it is not the court systems, the president, or the Congress that we have to thank today but the people, yeah. all of you. Yeah. Those who are here today, and those who have organized throughout history, breaking down barriers and impacting all of our lives. We've come a long way for the beginning of this struggle. Queer history, it exists everywhere. Yeah. But in the 1960s and 70s, we have some truly historic moments. Being queer was very different then. It was illegal in many regards in all 50 states, which is why many of the original riots at places like Compton Cafeteria in San Francisco and Stonewall in New York involved the police. 
This passion sparked some of the first LGBT organizations in the country. They organized together in the face of true oppression, in a time when sometimes walking down the street was literally illegal if you were wearing the wrong clothes. That's true. Yeah. But these people did not give up. They stood up taller, and they yelled louder, and they demanded for equality. We remember the places, but it's the people who came together after these moments to organize together and change the world that we live in. As I mentioned before, I'm an activist with a local grassroots nonprofit, Canvas for a Cause. If you've never met one of us, you clearly do too much online shopping. <laughs> Our work allows us to speak candidly with the public about LGBT rights. Our job gives us the unique opportunity to meet thousands of people who share their stories with us. And some of these people are fellow activists, like yourselves. I have met so many individuals, some of you who are probably here today, whose words have touched my heart. Parents who proudly show us pictures of their new babies and their families. Activists who are at historic moments like Stonewall and many other firsts in our history. People who share stories of their friends and partners who are no longer with us, but whose struggle and presence in this world changed the future for all of us. Yeah, that's worth a woo. <laughs> the generation, generation of people who came before me have the privilege of wisdom. They have witnessed so much of this struggle, <laughs> waiting four or five times longer than my entire life just to see this day, just to marry the person that they love. <laughs> but those children right there and all the children who are born after this will never remember anything but this. Yeah! It is our duty to tell the stories of our community to them, the hard days and the happy ones, to share this moment, our lives and our stories, from the mouths of the people who lived it and not just from what will end up in a textbook. Yeah! I feel positive that at the end of today, I will feel that same tugging of hope that I got when I would pull that newspaper out of my closet as a child. But because I'm older, I understand why. Today, many of us have 1,100 more rights than we did yesterday. Yay. But not all of us. Queer rights isn't just about marriage equality. Yeah. And we cannot stop with LGBT rights. Yeah, our community and our families are diverse in every way. And until all people are created equal, we must continue to rally and fight against oppression together. Yeah. This is a day we will never forget. But after the celebration, when the streets go quiet, if you feel that tug of hope, Embrace it. It should not sadden us that our struggle is not over, but empower us to continue to fight. Yeah! Thank you.
wants to shout it all around heaven. I shout it till the ancestors got the news. Because this is one of the greatest days in the history of our nation.
people who weren't necessarily supportive of the Supreme Court's decision today, am I right? So, you know what? We're going to take three seconds, and what I want you to do is throw all that negative energy away and let it fill up with love and all these awesome people that are here right now.
for continuing this battle, and I hope that in a couple years, you know, we really do reach justice, peace, and equity for all. Thank you.
but tomorrow we must continue to fight. To fight voter disenfranchisement that began the moment our same court ruled it unconstitutional for the federal government to monitor voting practices and procedures of states with histories of discriminatory behavior. Today we have tomorrow we have to continue to fight retaliation against workers that was upheld the moment our Supreme Court ruled that a worker must show that retaliation was the reason an employer denied employee advancement and not merely a motive. Tomorrow, we have to fight the refusal of our county to put our most important asset to the side, our people. Tomorrow, we must continue to fight the bans on same-sex marriage that continue to be within constitutions in over 30 states. We must fight, fight, and continue to fight as allies, as a coalition of us's. Many of us are allies in more than one fight, but the call to action is still the same. Whether you are an LGBTQIP rights ally, comprehensive immigration reform ally, home care providers ally, undocumented workers ally, reproductive rights ally, environmental justice ally, or an ally against the prison industrial complex. You have to come out. an ally and educate the masses. I think our brother Harvey Milk said it best. Brothers and sisters, he said, you must come out. Come out to your parents. Come out to your friends, if they are indeed your friends. Come out to your neighbors. Come out to your fellow workers. Once and for all, let's break down the myths and destroy the lies and distortions. San Diego, for your sake, come out. For the sake of all, come out for the sake of for the sake of free slaves and biracial couples whose marriages were not recognized. Come out for the sake of unpaid home care providers who care for our most vulnerable citizens and are treated harshly by our county. Come out for the sake of the dreamers, the dreamers who are the jewels within our education system, but still face the obstacles and the path. separated by a broken immigration system, come out. For the sake of disenfranchised voters everywhere, come out. For the sake of the systematically imprisoned youth, come out. For the sake of underpaid Walmart employees, county workers, day laborers, come out. Harvey said, in the Declaration of Independence, it is written, that all are created equal and endowed with certain inalienable, in <laughs> that was a big word for me, <laughs> inalienable rights. So to the Board of Supervisors, to the Gang of Eight, to the proponents of Proposition Eight, to the 1%, to Walmart and all those special interest groups out there, no matter how hard you try, you can never erase the words from the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> We celebrate, but tomorrow we continue to fight together as allies because that is what America is. Love it, believe it.
Marriage Act as unconstitutional today. Before this, Sean Brooks and his Colombian husband, Stephen's marriage, did not exist in the eyes of the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services. Stephen, who had not been back to Colombia for 12 years, applied to have his deportation canceled based on the hardship that his deportation would incur on his spouse. But the request was denied because federal law did not recognize same-sex couples. This is why our struggle matters! For a population of about 267,000 LGBT undocumented individuals, and I'm so glad I'm not the first person to talk about this, the Supreme Court rules, ruling comes as a future goalpost to look forward to now that federal laws have ended the discrimination against their love. It will also finally allow the federal government to treat all LGBT families equally by allowing them access to federal benefits and protections. I've been talking to my friends and allies at work about this. Are you ready for day of decision? Are you ready to rally in Hillcrest? I hope you guys are here right now. This morning, this morning when I got to work, there was a note on my desk that said, We did it! We, we have to talk to our co-workers. And if you're in a union, that's fantastic because it makes us safer to be out because we have an organization that can protect us from being fired. In, thir in more than 30 states in this country, we don't have those protections. We are still fighting for that. All right, there's so much I want to say. <laughs> um, also, California becomes the 13th state where marriage is legal. We can't leave the other 37 states behind. They're saying something about a processing delay of 25 days before they start marriage equality. I challenge the California county clerk's offices across the state to be ready to marry people by 12 noon tomorrow. Yeah. We've already been waiting for four and a half years. All right, it's sort of been said, but I wanted to invoke a little Muhammad Ali. We win today, but if this was a boxing match, we won the round, a big round, and we really won today. But we cannot step out of the ring, because this fight is not over. There are 37 states where it's not legal, and the harder we push for them to recognize our equal rights in California now, the easier it makes it for our brothers and sisters to struggle in those other states. Yay! Marriage equality, uh, the Supreme Court decision was uh, the headline news in Le Monde, which is a French publication today, by the way. It was sent to me by a family member in France. <laughs> Malcolm X said, you don't stick a knife in a man's back nine inches, and then pull it out six inches and say, you're making progress. Oh. <laughs> that is the spirit that we need to be fighting with. Yes, we won today and we should celebrate because we fought hard for this. Yeah. So let's keep fighting. A lot, of, um, a lot of my brothers and sisters today have talked about the need for solidarity with the black community, with immigrants, undocumented immigrants. One of the reasons why that's so important is if you look around, the LGBT community is rainbow colored in many, many ways. If you are a gay, black gay person, or if you're an immigrant and gay, those two things don't feel separate to you, that's all of you. And our movements are not separate, and our struggles are not separate, and an injury to one is an injury to all, and we have to fight for the equal rights of all people. against police brutality and I wanted to make a, a brief shout out to a, someone I never got to meet and his name is Victor Ortega and many people don't know about this but he was murdered by San Diego police last year June 4th and there has been no justice served the district attorney D D Bonnie Dumanis refuses to even investigate the shooting by officer John McCarthy police brutality is a real thing in San Diego just like it is in other cities in this country and we have to be part of fighting that because when police br brutalize the most marginalized members of our community it makes it easier for them to brutalize us remember that being gay was criminal not very long ago and gay people were beaten by the police legally I mean it's not like there was a policy that said you should beat up cops but they weren't penalized for doing so we had to fight for that not to happen and we have to fight to end police brutality because what's happening is it makes it i was arrested for standing up 
for marriage rights at the county clerk's office with eight other people in San Diego. It was a couple of years ago, and because marriage equality wasn't legal, they said we were trespassing, and they filed charges, and we had to wait two years before those charges were dismissed. That's brutality. We were demanding our equal rights. from Susan Davis today, and she seemed pretty excited. She said, you can be certain whether it is ensuring that full benefits accrue to our LGBT service members and their spouses. Yeah. I hope she means transgender people who are still not protected in the military. Yeah. Yeah. Or that full and fair immigration rights are accorded to same-sex couples. Well, I guess she didn't read the news because now they do have their full rights, thanks to DOMA being repealed. I'll be there fighting for equality every step of the way. Well, when our politicians tell us that, we have to hold them to it. Yeah! And I'd like to know why she didn't mention ENDA, because we actually have a majority now um, in the Senate supporting the Employee Non-Discrimination Act, Trans Inclusive, which would protect workers from being fired for being gay, perceived as gay, wanting to come out, and so forth in the workplace. We don't have that, but we could. What are we waiting for? What are our politicians waiting for? That's the next thing we have to be fighting for. All right, I'm just, um, someone else, um, and I really appreciate this, took a moment to remember those who are no longer with us, and I have two specific people I want to remember today. One is Tom Wilhine and his partner, Richard Wilhine, I'm sure, is here. They, they were together for, I, I think now it would have been 40 years. Um, but unfortunately, Tom passed away before they could see this day together. And they served in the military under, um, in the closet because they well, were not able to come out in the military at that time as Navy medics. And they also were never recognized for their full partner benefits because DOMA had not been repealed. And it's, it's too late for them. They won't have that. And this is why we shouldn't accept you know, those who tell us that we have to wait. Just wait for the process, it'll come. Well, for those who have to, have had to wait for too long, they're not here anymore to celebrate with us. And that's why Martin Luther King said, justice delayed is justice denied. And for Tom Wilhine, it was denied. I also want to mention our fallen comrade, Michael Kennedy, who's not with us because he was ill, and he's also passed away. He sat in with us two years ago at the county clerk's office and was arrested with us, and I wish that, and I know that all of us wish that he could be here with us today. All right, I'm almost finished here. Um, well, it turns out I skipped ahead and actually said what I was going to say already. <laughs> I just want to mention real quick, there were some forces in the LGBT community who said that the people who were challenging Prop 8 in the court and taking it all the way to the Supreme Court, that that was the wrong tactic. They shouldn't do that. And to that, I just want to say, let's not let anyone ever, especially our so-called allies, tell us to wait or stand down um, because the tactic is not right or it's not the right time. Because look at us, we won. This is why we're here today. Because people are not afraid to stand up and fight for their rights. Obama finally stopped defending uh, the Defense of Marriage Act. But it wasn't, in my opinion, out of some generosity, although some people may think so. He had no choice. The gay community has fought so hard for recognition. And there has been a challenge, you know, uh, the threat to boycott and stop funding his campaigns and so forth. That's the kind of energy we need. We do not stand with you unless you stand with us. And that's how his defense of DOMA was repealed. Same thing goes for the Supreme Court. We learned that lesson yesterday. There's Richard Wilhelm. We learned that lesson yesterday um, with the, a massive gutting of the Voting Rights Act. We cannot count on the Supreme Court. The reason why they voted our way is because look at us. We are fighting and they had no choice. That's all I really wanted to say. Thank you so much for standing here for so long, but we are not done. I know all of you have been waiting to march. about gay rights is that the people high five you that are sitting in the bars at Baja Betty's and we need to chant loud, please chant with me and high five those people, everybody wants to celebrate, Hillcrest is going to party tonight! Oh, I'm actually supposed to explain how we're going to do this march. <laughs> Alright, I want to shout out to the organizers of Canvas for a Cause, you see Sam here with the pride flag with the word peace on it. If, please follow the people of Canvas for a Cause who have this flag. They're going to lead this march. And please don't let me be the only one chanting.